the Smithsonian Gardens, known for its extensive collections and award-winning gardens. The Smithsonian Gardens staff is responsible for maintaining the over 180 acres of gardens surrounding the Smithsonian Museums and support facilities in the Washington, D.C. metro region. Their mission, to enrich the Smithsonian experience through exceptional gardens, horticultural exhibits, collections, and education. We have many great features out here at our museum in the gardens, which include a butterfly habitat, a soon-to-be-open bird habitat, but there's also many other landscape features out here that are really significant for our visitors. One of the staff's main focuses is safety hazards. For instance, trees. A dying tree can pose a major safety risk to the people and objects around it. Let's take a look at how the Smithsonian Gardens deals with a tree that they have determined to be a threat. An American elm, or simply, tree number 12. This tree, uh, unfortunately this summer looks a little sparse compared to the other ones in the row. And uh, just looks a little bit less healthy, so we're concerned about what's going on on the inside. The Smithsonian Gardens bring in expert Tony Musiardi of Tree Radar to do a more intensive observation. And we found uh, in one of these trees that there was quite advanced decay. It was evidenced by holes in the tree as well as on the ground. We saw mushrooms growing along major roots, which is never a good sign. Working with the Smithsonian, Tony uses ground penetrating radar to do a more intense scan of the tree. Ground penetrating radar is a technology that's been around for over 30 years. Uh, and it's used a lot for looking at concrete, for reinforcement, for thickness. Uh, it's look, looking in the ground for buried tanks and utilities, as well as forensic uses by the police for looking for bodies that have been buried and so on. Our application is applying it to trees, both to the trunks as well as to the roots, looking for tree safety issues. Is the tree at risk of falling? Uh, and two things can happen at risk. One is the trunk can be decayed even though it looks fine on the outside and the tree is in full bloom. It could be quite hollow on the inside because the living parts are just very close to the surface. The first piece of equipment Tony uses is the ground antenna. As he pushes the device forward, it fires off a radar pulse every two tenths of an inch that the antenna moves. That's 60 pulses per foot. The radar bounces off the roots and sends the data to a computer that puts together a virtual map of the tree's root system. This is what the actual results of tree number 12 look like. The ground penetrating radar gives us a view from the top down. The computer shows us how dense the roots are by a color code. Dark red to yellow indicates a strong, dense, healthy root, while blue and green means that the roots are less dense and weaker. As you can see by the radar map, tree number 12 only has strong roots at the base of its trunk, while the rest of the system is made up of smaller and weaker roots. This pattern is consistent with the likelihood of a dead or dying root system. But the tests aren't done yet. The crew moves on to scanning the inside of the tree itself. For this experiment, Tony will use a handheld version of the ground penetrating radar. They set up guidelines for the scanner to follow to get a more accurate reading. The handheld scanner then gently rolls around the tree. Like the ground version, it fires off a radar pulse for every two tenths of an inch that it moves. To create a picture of the inside of the tree, the radar detects changes in the tree's density. The data gathered are then transferred to a computer which assembles the information. Here are the results of tree number 12's internal scan. Solid or sound wood is shown as a tan color, while wood with decay is seen as red or orange. The gray areas are spots along the tree that were too inconsistent to get valid results. But as the graphic shows, tree number 12 already has significant amounts of decay on the inside of its trunk. Based on the extensive testing, it is determined that tree number 12 has a failing root system and is rotting from the inside. Therefore, the tree must be removed as it poses a significant safety risk to all around it. The Smithsonian never wants to see one of its prized elm trees go, but for the good of public safety, it must be done. And the Smithsonian Gardens bring in a licensed and experienced tree care and removal company.
As you have seen, the Smithsonian Gardens goes to great lengths to see if one of its trees is a danger to the public. While safety is their number one concern, the staff is mainly focused on keeping the rest of the gardens healthy. They are constantly monitoring all exhibits and collections while keeping current with industry standards and research. The gardens also employ advanced future planning to ensure that visitors will have something to look forward to for years to come.